in Town Hall tonight, folks. 60 minutes of fun and music brought to you by Ipana Toothpaste and Style Herbatica. Ipana for the smile of beauty, Style Herbatica for the smile of health. Fun with our star comedian, Fred Allen. Music with Peter Van Seeden. New features, new laughs. It's Town Hall tonight. <laughs> To that crowd cheer Fred Allen as he heads his weekly parade to the old town hall. Fred's leading the band with an adding machine, followed by those unwelcome additions to the drama, the mighty Allen Art Players. Let's join that happy throng, folks. Everybody's going. Everybody's going. Here they come. The own quintuplets. Aren't the babies on exhibition this evening, Doctor? No, madam. The little tots are busy at their radios. It's town hall tonight. Farmer, what's the idea of putting a radio in your hen house, Clem? Hens can learn plenty about laying eggs from that Allen, Zeb. It's town hall tonight. G-Man. But this is hardly a case for the G-Man, lady. It sure is. Those thieves stole my radio, Mr. Hilburn. It's town hall tonight. Well, here we are before the old town hall. And Peter is opening the show with Something Tells Me. Waiting is through. I hope something is telling you to. Something whispers that we'll never part, and something tells me it's my heart. That garrulous goof, gasping gay gargantuan guffle, goggling giggling gags, galvanic glorified guffaws, great neck schooner guna, Fred Allen in person. Thank you, thank you. I was just. <laughs> Just taking a digest nap there, Andre. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, there's no word from Hodge White tonight, folks. We've just had a flash that the post office subpoenaed Hodge to get back its pen. So Hodge wasn't able to write out his announcement this week. <laughs> so much for quill kleptomania going on around the country. And now for the town hall news. The curtain, Andre. Coming right down. Please. The lights go out, and we bring you the latest news of the week. The town hall news sees nothing, feels around for the news. <laughs> New York City, New York. Mr. William F. Carey, sanitation commissioner, is starting to prepare a new set of titles for various ranks in the street cleaning department. The purpose of giving men in different branches of the street cleaning service titles is to add dignity to their positions and augment their morale. Town Hall News questions several prominent citizens to check on public's reaction to titles for men who clean the city streets. Mr. Tam Tibby Squirm, local politician, says, I say the men who clean our city streets are entitled to as much respect as the men who clean our city treasury. <laughs> if my bill goes through, every street cleaner will have a crest on his cart and a coat of arms. What is the coat of arms, Mr. Squirm? A mess of rubbish rampant on a field of manhole covers. <laughs> oh, how picturesque and thank you. Mrs. Renfrew Van Derge, Park Avenue matron, says... Street cleaners on Park Avenue should wear satin breeches and mess jackets. After all, one contacts a swankier debris in the better neighborhoods. 
You can't tell what you'll pick up on Park Avenue. That's how I got my first husband. He was filthy, but with Luca. <laughs> Doberman Schwab, a street cleaner, says. I've been motivating a broom on Broadway for 20 years, and all of a sudden they give me a title. Vice President in Charge of Jetsam. <laughs> First thing you know, they'll have me going over the streets with a vacuum cleaner. Excuse me, bud, some bum just threw a racing form in the gutter. If the standards of the street cleaning department are raised, and the men all have their titles, we may soon see the day when street cleaners' work will function on a higher plane. Town Hall News shows what may happen if street cleaning department goes high hat. The scene, a spot near Times Square. A woman is about to throw an orange peel into the street. Hey! Hold it, lady, just a minute. Oh, uh, uh, speaking to me, officer? Yeah, what was you just going to do? I was going to throw this orange skin in the gutter. That's a trash felony, lady. Ah, uh, the street cleaner will pick it up in a minute. Yeah, New York street cleaners is only meeting debris by appointment. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do, hold this orange skin in my hand? No, lady, step over to the box. I'm getting you some service. Oh. Hello? Department of Sanitation? This is Officer Muldoon, corner of 45th and 6th. There's a lady here waiting to throw away a piece of orange peel. The minute the phone message is received at the Department of Sanitation, a call is sent out over the special street cleaning shortwave set. Calling all push cans. <laughs> Calling all push cans. Reported once, 45th and 6th Avenue. Lady waiting to throw away a piece of orange peel. That is all. <laughs> the call is received by two rubbish contact men who have a radio set in their push cam. A few seconds later, they report ready for action. Well, here they come now, lady. Gee, they're pushing that can like mad. Oh, what's the ball down? Yeah, boys. We just got the SOS. I'm Jones, officer, senior assistant contact man in charge of broom. And I'm Gaffney, officer, second vice picker-upper in charge of shovel. Well, glad to know you, boys. Hey, what am I supposed to do with this orange peel? Is this the lady you put in the car? Oh, yeah, sorrow. I uh, didn't introduce you, boys. This is... Uh... Uh, Minnie Pius. I'm from Bridgeport. Glad, Glad to know you, Miss Pius. Hiya, fellas. Now, what about my orange peel? Is the second vice president in charge of shovel ready? Stand by. Is the senior assistant contact man in charge of broom on guard? Stand by. You can throw it down now, Miss Pius. Here you are, boys. Share it among you. Touche, Jones. Touche, Gav. <laughs> Some service, eh, Miss Pius? Thank you, boys. Thank, Thank you for your business, Miss Pius. Well, we got a scram. We got a one o'clock appointment. There's a new chock full of nuts store opening on 42nd Street. And the mayor's throwing out the first pistachio. <laughs> Say, is it the confetti you boys are cleaning up? No, no lady. lady. It's, it's the, the nuts. nuts. New York City, New York. The New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad opens a new travel information bureau in the Grand Central Station with brief ceremonies. New Bureau will supply information on areas served by New York, New Haven, and Hartford, and also give general travel service. The Town Hall News shows opening of the new Information Bureau. Take it away, Senator. Uh, thank you. I hereby christen you a font of travel information. Well, well I'm here. Information Bureau's open, folks. Come and get it. Oh, uh, clerk. Yes, lady. Uh, what time can I get a train for Albany? Do you want to go on the 2 2 train, lady? Never mind the baby talk. I've got to get to Albany. <laughs> the train goes 2 2. I know the train goes 2 2, and the automobile goes honk honk. But what time can I leave for Albany? At two minutes past two, lady. Well, why don't you say so? Of all the stupid... Hey, Bud, uh, give me a ticket and make it snappy. A ticket to where? Any place. I got business all over. <laughs> well, the ticket window's to your left. Oh, a wise guy, eh? Just for that, I'm taking a bus. I never see it. Now, what is it, mister? Hey, I, uh, I got two weeks vacation. Where can I go? Well, that all depends on how much you want to spend. For $12, you can go to Maine. Twelve dollars? Uh, let me see. Oh, Clark. Yes, lady. Can I go to Syracuse by Buffalo? It's quicker by train, lady. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, uh, you say I can go to Maine for twelve dollars? Yes, sir. Old Orchard Beach, Portland, Booth Bay Harbor. Twelve dollars is a little too much. You can go to New Hampshire for eight dollars. Eight dollars? Oh, uh, clerk. Yes, sir. Can you tell me if I can get a friend at Figglegrass with Dawson and Nitro on the state about these? On track seven. Thank you. Uh, say, uh, you said $8 to New Hampshire, mister? Yes, that's right. 
Well, eight dollars is a lot of money. You can go to Connecticut for three dollars. Oh, pardon me, clerk. Yes, lady. Is the milk train in from Peekskill yet? Just got in, lady. Good. I want to get two quarts. Uh, 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 you said three dollars to Connecticut, didn't you, buddy? Are you still here? Yeah, three dollars is a lot of money to go to Connecticut. Well, you can go to Porchester for two dollars. Two dollars, eh? You can go to New Rochelle for a dollar and a half. You can go to Yonkers for a dollar. Uh, where can I go for eighty-five cents? You can go to. Uh, 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 uh. I'm, I'm a minister. A minister? Yes. Where can I go for eighty-five cents? To the Paramount. <laughs> New York City, New York. The two-day sale of period furniture held at the Park Vernet Galleries on Fifth Avenue brings total proceeds of over $22,000. The highlight of the auction was the purchase of a Napoleonic gold snuff box for $500. Town Hall News shows candid camera shot of the snuff box being auctioned. The scene, the auction galleries. <laughs> Sold to the lady with the toes coming out of her shoes. <laughs> Next, I'm putting up this solid gold Napoleonic snuff box, used by Napoleon himself at Waterloo. What am I offered for Napoleon snuff box, folks? This lid opens up. I just, just, what am I offered? Gesundheit, five hundred dollars. Gesundheit, sold. Gesundheit. New York City, New York. MGM presents one of the outstanding pictures of the season at a leading Broadway theater. The film, Yellow Jack, is hailed as artistic success by press and public. Town Hall News presents a ten-second preview of this picture, Yellow Jack. Yellow Jack. Why ain't you playing your violin in public these days, Mr. Benny? I'm afraid. Yellow Jack, huh? <laughs> And now the Merry Max, ladies and gentlemen. The Merry Max learned to sing in a hammock, and they've been swinging ever since. Tonight they swing, I'm forever blowing bubble. to be outdone by any other news-gathering agency, Scoops America. Scoop! Monday, May 30th is Decoration Day on Scoop. <laughs> and Saturday, we'll see an army of vacationing weekenders on the march. For their benefit, we have a few timely suggestions as to equipment. The seashore calls for a bathing suit, possibly a water wing or two. Well, uh, but look, Fred, there's always the possibility we might have a cold spell. Well, in that case, a jigsaw puzzle is the very thing. 
or a motor trip, or a first or a sojourn in the mountains, I take don't a see how you can be specific about that, Fred. It might rain, you know. Well, you're not very helpful, are you, Mr. Baru? Isn't there anything in the way of equipment I might suggest to vacationists that will uh, win your wholehearted support? Why, certainly, Fred. You could suggest taking along a bottle of Sal Hepatica, because Sal Hepatica will help you feel your best so you'll get the most out of your holiday. But when you go away, ladies and gentlemen, the food and drinking water is different. You're apt to eat irregularly or to get too much exercise. And things like that very often upset your system and spoil your whole weekend. It's easy to understand because under those conditions, two things are usually present. Accumulated weight and gastric acidity. And as millions know, a sparkling glass of sal hepatica is ideal to take then for this reason. As a laxative, sal hepatica brings you quick relief. As an antiacid, sal hepatica counteracts gastric acidity. And because of this double health, sal hepatica gives you a fast comeback. So buy a bottle of sal hepatica tomorrow at your nearest drugstore. Take it any time you feel sluggish and under par. You'll be surprised how quickly you'll be back on your toes again, thanks to the double help of sal hepatica. <laughs> Our Panna Troubadours have just finished welding their version of Siboney. And that wasn't welding the word, the right word, Peter. It was hot enough to weld, wasn't it? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I know you didn't expect to meet... Whom are we meeting tonight, Fred? Well, it's a long story, Andre. Some months ago, an anti-noise campaign was started here in New York City. Taxi drivers' horns were muffled, peanut stand whistles were muted, and all of the sidewalk maestros... Men who spread the gospel of symphony in backyards and side streets were banished from the city. These were the hand organ men, Andre. Say, that's right. I haven't heard a hand organ in New York for months. No, I know. And I'll bet there are hundreds of people around the town who'd give anything to hear a hand organ ringing clear this evening. And that is why I've invited as our guest one of the last of that vanishing race, the organ grinders. And I know, ladies and gentlemen, that tonight you didn't expect to meet... Mr. Alfred Fiorello. Good evening, Mr. Fiorello. Good evening, Fred. Alfred, I'm a little disappointed. I thought you'd bring your monkey along. I got the monkey with me. Fine. Well, I thought, <laughs> I thought perhaps you were, were going to ask me to sit up on your hand organ and sort of <laughs> fill in, as it were. The one monkey's a plenty. What? <laughs> One monkey. Well, if you have the monkey, where is he? Have you got him in your back pocket? No, I carry him in this bag under my coat, see? Oh, under your coat, huh? 
Well, sure enough, Mr. Fiorella has the monkey in a canvas bag that hangs down over one shoulder onto his hip. You see, from what I see, uh, saw just a second ago, your monkey is certainly a robust-looking specimen, Alfred. Yes, we both feel fine. And you both look in the paint. But tell me, how long have you been regaling the world with your pavement whirlit, sir, and your little Darwinian tidbit? Thirty-five years. Thirty-five years. Say, if all of the tunes you've played were laid end to end, Grover Whalen would have sufficient music to see him through the World's Fair and enough left over for the workmen to whistle while they're putting Flushing back the way they found it. <laughs> but getting back to our business, Alfred, do you, uh, do you train your own monkeys? Yes. I trained 40 or 50 monkeys. You have trained 40 or 50. Well, is it difficult to train a monkey? No. A monkey can do anything a five-year-old boy can do. Except to grow up to be president, of course. You never can tell, Fred. You never <laughs> can tell. How yes. devastatingly true. But does it take long for you to train a monkey? About one year. One year. Well, how do you teach him his tricks? I do it, and then the monkey do it. You do it first, and then they... Well, what... <laughs> What are some? Of, what are the some of the tricks you've taught your monkey? He smoke a pipe, wear glasses, ring the bell, and shakes hands. You know, I know a vice president right in this building who has the same repertoire. <laughs> as soon as they can teach him to stay awake at conferences, he's a cinch to be promoted. <laughs> But tell me, Alfred, how often do you feed your monkey? Three times a day, same as me. What does he eat? Coconuts and bananas? No, he eats what I eat. He eats what you... Well, I didn't know that a monkey would eat minestrone soup and chicken cacciatore. Oh, and spaghetti. And spaghetti, too. <laughs> well, how does he eat spaghetti? With a fork? No, he suck it up like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Uh... I used to inhale spaghetti that way, but the ends always flapped in my eyes. <laughs> Gosh, I used to see grated cheese spots, and my astigmatism would be old grotten for days. <laughs> but say, isn't the, uh, isn't the monkey getting heavy in that little pouch there? No, I carry him around all day. And your hand organ, too? Yes, Fred. Well, how many tunes have you got trapped in your melody vault there now? Here's a list. This is a list of the numbers, huh? Tramp, Tramp, Beautiful Ohio, River Shannon, and My Wild Irish Rose. Well, this sounds like the hit parade from 1896. Don't you ever change your score? Never. I see. You, uh, you just keep playing the River Shannon till you wear it down to a creek, huh? <laughs> That's right. Well, where do you get these organs? Down to Jim Molinari in Brooklyn. Jim Molinari in Brooklyn. I must stop over and get measured for one for the <laughs> for the spring before I go home. Well, do you travel around a lot with your uh, with your uh, uh, monkey and your music? Yes, I go all over. You go all over. Wouldn't it be easy for you to keep your hand organ in a big city like New York? New York no good for a hand organ grind. They give me summons. They give you the summons. Yes, I I guess the only time New Yorkers hear hand organ music today is when they go out of town to buy their cigarettes. <laughs> but you, uh, you used to be welcome in New York, Alfred. Yes. What became of the Tommy? <laughs> what the, you know what became of the hand organ? Yes. That became of Tammany, Alfred. <laughs> but you're all, you're all tanned up. Where have you been giving recitals all winter? Down south? In the winter, I go south for the monkey help. For the monkey's help. Well, how about your own? With me, the monkey comes first. The monkey comes first. Well, so some people contend. <laughs> well, it's nice of you. <laughs> it's nice of you to consider the welfare of your silent partner. It's, uh, and it's certainly been a pleasure to go over the, the simian and hand dog and situation with you, Alfred. And before you go, I wonder if you'd play us a little sonata on your gutter Steinway there. <laughs> sure, Fred. There is a cop over there? No, there's no cop in the studio, Alfred. That boy, you, that, that's a, uh, the one you see there, uh, that's a Radio City page boy. That badge he has on is really a distinguished service medal. He saw action at a Toscanini broadcast. <laughs>
He was later decorated upstairs and a new ramrod put in his coat. Okay. Now, if you'll get the monkey... <laughs> if you'll get the monkey out of the bag, I'll watch out for the law. Okay. All right. You want to take the monkey, Bobby, out now? You want to take him out? Yeah. Perfectly all right. What are you going to play for us? There he is. Whatever comes out, I play. Whatever comes out, you're going to play, hey? <laughs> Peter, you better pull up a chair and learn something here. <laughs> well, say, that was fine. The sidewalks of New York. But you've never... You'd never rec the, uh, recognize the sidewalks of New York on 6th Avenue with all the wood they've got out there now. Say, as long as you've got the monkey out, would you have him do one or two of those tricks you showed me at rehearsal? Sure. You will, huh? Well, how about the Mussolini salute? Could he do Mussolini. that? Mussolini. <laughs> well, that's very good. Now, how about the worried businessman, Alfred, that other imitation? The tired businessman. He's <laughs> walking up and down with his hands behind his back with a little derby on. Looks strangely like someone I know. Well, thanks a lot, Alfred. That sort of livened things up for us. And thank you a lot for this little visit. And, uh, wait a minute. Folks, the monkey is up on my shoulders investigating my scalp here, so I'm bidding Mr. Fiorello a messy adieu. <laughs> Thought the monkey had something there for a second or so. <laughs> and now the town... The now... We could probably do more with my head than I'm doing with it. And now the town hall quartet, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight the boys enlist vocally for one verse and two courses to sing There's Something About a Soldier. <laughs> Love to see a soldier. Oh, they jump on your chest. You fall in with the rest. You want to see a soldier. You will run half a mile, but it's well worth your while. Because somebody has told you that in the palace yard you see the changing of the guard. Oh, how you run to see a soldier. Because there's something about a soldier. Something about a soldier. Something about a soldier that is fine, fine, fine. He may be a great big general, may be a sergeant major, may be a simple private of the line, line, line. But there's something about his bearing, something about his wearing, something about his buttons all a shine, shine, shine. Oh, a military chest seems to suit the ladies best. There's something about a soldier that is fine, fine, fine. Microphone for a minute. You see, I'm a school teacher, oh, and I'd like oh, to... Oh, I get it. And you want the microphone to scare your class into turning off the radio and settling down to their homework. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Allen. 
I'd just like to remind the parents of school children how important good dental habits are. Well, don't you think most parents nowadays know uh, all about that? Well, in a general way, yes, but that's, but that's not enough. For instance, we drill the children in the proper use of the toothbrush and the importance of massage to sound teeth and healthy gums. But I think a lot of men and women are apt to overlook that. Don't you agree with me, Mr. Belouche? Why, yes, indeed. Sound teeth and healthy gums are why we constantly urge the daily use of Ipana toothpaste and gum massage. For it's a fact, ladies and gentlemen, that teeth are seldom sound and sparkling when gums are tender and undernourished. And the modern, well-cooked foods we eat, delicious as they are, do not give our gums the toning and exercise they need for firmness and health. Fortunately, we can help make up for that lost work and stimulation by doing as so many dentists advise. Every time you brush your teeth with Ipana toothpaste, put a little extra Ipana on your fingertip or on a new double-duty toothbrush and massage it on your gums. That's the modern way to help promote solid, healthy gums and sparkling, lustrous teeth. For that's exactly what Ipana and massage is designed to do. So why not start tomorrow to make your smile more attractive? One you can be really proud of. Put your druggist and buy a tube of Ipana toothpaste. <laughs> Town Hall tonight continues immediately after a short pause for your station identification. Peter Van Steeden and the Ipana Troubadours have just played part of Good Morning. Now on Sunday morning here at the Town Hall, the Hay Fever Guild will meet for pollen drill. And there. Now, quiet. Uh-uh. The acoustics bruise easily here. I may have to dab some minute rub on the walls of these the acoustics sort of... Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> well, sir, they laughed when I said the magician's hair was coming out. They didn't know I was going to pull his rabbit out of the hat. <laughs> If it is, <laughs> if it isn't, <laughs> well, you have to make faces with a joke like that. You do. A poor old joke like that, you drag it out, you have to help it as much as you can. What I really should do is hide that monkey on me and let it out at rare, <laughs> on rare occasion. Well, if it isn't, what's her name? Yes, Mama sent me out to get a golf club. Well, don't tell me your mother's taking up that rollicking game of meadow badminton. <laughs> No, but our baby followed a golf ball. A golf ball, and your mother is... Uh, uh, Mama's going to spank it with a niblick. Well, you'd, uh, you'd better get right home and caddy for your mother. The baby might turn out to be a tough course, you know. <laughs> Hello, Portman. Uh, pardon me, but uh, I never speak to strange men at microphones. Portland, this is Andre Barouche. Andre's taking Harry Von Zell's place, remember? Oh, yes. Hello, Andre. Gosh, you were swell last week. Yes, well, yes. Thank you, Portland. Hello, fans. <laughs> Hello, Peter. Optimist in the plural, yes. <laughs> not, uh, not stuff Van Steeden. It isn't Benny Goodman. <laughs> well, you could be with the top of your head going into that big apple. Be careful. You know what you got from Jack Benny Sunday night. <laughs> laugh when Jack beat Mr. Allen up on his program. <laughs> See, I nearly passed out when Fred started crying. Yeah, <laughs> when I started crying, I uh, dubbed in a, a cry for me. How did Benny beat me up? In effigy. And at that, he had to make me a little boy in his sketch before he could do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you yeah. can't take it even as a kid. Well, Benny better not start anything with me, or Jell-O's going to have eight delicious flavors. <laughs> what eight, Fred? What? I said, what eight? Well, out to strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, lime, and black and blue. <laughs> you shouldn't fight with Jack now. He's pretty weak going on that yeah, he's diet. He's always weak. Say, I wonder why Paramount made Jack cut down on his food. Well, he's making the picture for his room and board. And Paramount caught him overdoing the latter. 
Why, they tell me a way to walk into the commissary one day was 15 meatballs, and Benny ran pool before the waiter could set down the play. <laughs> Benny's better in pictures than you are for my money. Oh, yes? Who won the Academy Award last year? Spencer Tracy. And I know Spencer Tracy better than Benny does. <laughs> So what does that prove? It proves that if Benny keeps making pictures, he's going to make fresh air fiends out of a lot of theater goers. You can say what you want, but I thought Jack was swell as Tom Sawyer Sunday. Tom Sawyer. He played the part like one of the Finn boys. Huckleberry? No, Mickey. <laughs> Beating me up as a kid. Why, I could have met him in a day nursery and licked him with open safety pins at ten paces. <laughs> I hope this is someone uh, who knows Benny or a safety pin. Come in. Uh, so I'm going fine. No, I'm going fine. And I am saying, lay this Now, fire. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Now, what is this? Does he happen to be looking for a certain party? Uh, Alan is the name. Such a party is on the premises. Uh, this is Mr. Allen, folks. Oh, so I will do the talking. No, go uh, boy. Glapitas will do the talking. So I am tongue-tied, maybe. I could do the talking. Now, look, look. To settle this... I will do the talking. What is it you folks want? Uh, Harry Wanzell. Such a party is in the vicinity. <laughs> Harry's away on his vacation. Oh, uh, what is Goldberg telling you, Lapidus? So now I'll do the talking. Uh, 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 uh. Goldberg will do the talking. So who is paying salaries? Lapidus. So who will do the talking? Lapidus. Thank you. <laughs> well, I still don't know. Lapidus will explain. But Harry Wanzell is dealing with the deli. Uh, you could use maybe some talent. What is it you do, Mr. Lapidus? You are now looking on Lapidus and his little Dixie minstrels. Oh, I'm from the Dixie, so he's from Dixie. Oh, so we're from the Dixie, too. <laughs> Even if it was on key, I wouldn't like it. Now, don't tell me this is a minstrel show. Why, we'll have you all to know we all is coming direct from down yonder in the sunny south. I am Sugarfoot Lapidus. So honor and Ed men on Lapidus's combination, showboat and pawn shop. <laughs> Introducing myself, Lesses Goldberg. Ta-da! You are a minstrel too, Lesses? Well, uh, I'm putting on the face black and making like a darky. How come you all and likewise and stuff like that? <laughs> so no one is presenting me? Are you with the minstrel? I am Honey Bernstein, the darling of the Mississippi. <laughs> Up and down the Mississippi, Honey Bernstein is going like a seagull. <laughs> do you do anything else beside the minstrel show? Sugarfoot Lapidus Little Dixie Minstrel is presenting all sorts of attractions. For example, this season in Natchez, Mississippi, we are opening with Uncle Tomaszewski's cabin. Uh, between the acts, uh, Honey Bernstein, as little Leva, is singing Carry Me Back to Old Virginia with hot legs. <laughs> and Sugarfoot Lapidus is playing the villain, Simon Simone Legree. Where did you play next, Lasses? Next, we all is ringing up in Wigs Butch. Fans is making it Honey Bernstein night. Yes. We are putting on ten nights in a delicatessen. <laughs> Where did you finish your season? At Base Drum, Arkansas. By a special permission with Gilbert and Solomon, <laughs> we are putting on HMS Pinafore. And uh, Honey Bernstein is making with a solo. I'm for little butterscotch, for little butterscotch. The reason. Never mind, never mind the reason. We'll skip the reason. <laughs> this is all very entertaining, folks, but what do you want from me? Uh, Lapidus' little Dixie Minstrel is here to go on the radio. Uh, can you give an audition, Mr. Lapidus? What else? The curtain is going up on the opening chorus. Have a nice afternoon, I've got some good things there. It's good fun. Look away, look away, look away. Perfect. <laughs> Gentlemen, be sitting. Ta -da! Well, Mr. Bones, so how are you all feeling? I'm feeling like a small herring. So, how is this? I'm a little pickled. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, uh, now it's not the laughing. After the laughing, I am saying, so how is feeling by you all, Timbo? Well, sir, I was sick until I seen my congressman. <laughs> <laughs> 
He is making you all feel better? Sure enough. Now I'm getting a little relief. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so now, Sugarfoot Lapidus is singing. No, he's not. Am I to construe that Lapidus' little Dixie Minstrels is not going on the radio? Over my dead body. So who could wait so long? Quiet, all. So Harry Bernstein is having the last one. No, let's just go by he's having the last no, one. And no. I say Sugarfoot Lapidus is having the last no, one. No, no, you're all wrong. Portland has the last word. Portland? Howie? Oh. Thank you. We've just had a request from a lady in the front row who wasn't paying attention when the Merrimack sang a little while ago. The lady has asked the Merrimack to sing Giannina Mia. Just made it. Gentlemen, while thumbing my way through a calendar, I was brought up with a start to learn that yesterday was the anniversary of the first use of the telegraph. Well, as I often say, times do change. In the old days, when you had an important message to deliver, it took an awful lot of... and a considerable number of... to get your point across. But nowadays, all you need is a microphone and Andre Baruch. And the important message, ladies and gentlemen, concerns you and how Sal Hepatica can help you feel at your best every day. Now, suppose you wake up tomorrow feeling headachy and loggy. You'll probably take a laxative. But think now about what you take then. For if you take something with a laxative action only, you will be doing nothing to help counteract gastric acidity. But if you take a sparkling glass of Sal Hepatica, you'll be getting double help. Or as so many physicians will tell you, as a laxative, salopatica removes accumulated waste both quickly and gently. And as an anti-acid, salopatica counteracts gastric acidity at the same time. And naturally, that gives you a fast comeback. So buy a bottle of salopatica from your druggist first thing tomorrow. Put two teaspoonfuls in a glass of water and drink it any time you feel sluggish and under par. See how soon your head is clearer and your pep is back when you rely on the double help of Sal Hepatica. Started the sweetest romance 
that anyone could see. She was dimpled and round and rosy, there was picture within his eyes. But the teacher was never nosy, so the teacher never got wise. They would share their sweets each day in the sweetest way. That was 20 years ago, and they do the same today. Now that brother married them, they're so happy, and they're sending their children free to that little Dutch kindergarten down by the fire sea. Stephen, the Arpana Troubadours and the Town Hall Quartet have just played and sung for you in a little Dutch kindergarten. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the mighty Allen Art Players. This is the only company to ever play Trelawney of the Wells in the Dust Bowl and have the wells dry up on Trelawney during the first act. Tonight, they present a sluggish racetrack mystery called Who Stole the Favorite? Or One Long Pan Had His Hands Tied... Still, he was feeling his oats. Over to your Peter. Mrs. Jitney's resident. Uh, good evening. I'm Professor Spavin. Is Mrs. Jitney expecting you? Yes, I've come to question Mrs. Jitney about her horse, Dog Biscuit. Ah, yes. Dog Biscuit is racing Rear Admiral tomorrow. Oh, Metcalf. Someone for me. Professor Spavin is here to see you. Oh, how do you do? Well, sit down, Professor Spavin. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Jitney. The Equine Neurological Institute wants to psychoanalyze Dog Biscuit before the big race with Rear Admiral tomorrow. Oh, very well. Oh, Metcalf. Yes, ma'am? Uh, go out to the stable and convey to Dog Biscuit that he's to be psychoanalyzed. Very good, ma'am. Dog Biscuit's a most unusual horse, Professor. His mentality is amazing. Uh, there's talk about the paddock, Mrs. Jitney. The dog biscuit actually reads. Words of one syllable, yes. Oh. And dog biscuit is crazy about the movies. Has he a favorite movie star? Yes, Dorothy Lemaire. Well, I can't wait to psychoanalyze your horse, Mrs. Jitney. Mrs. Jitney, oh, Mrs. Jitney. He what? disappeared. Who, me, who met Tom? Dog Biscuit, Mum. He's disappeared. Well, he's been horse-sapped. But what about the big race with Rear Admiral tomorrow? Dog Biscuit has got to be found at once. We must notify the constabulary. Oh, this is awful. Terrible. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Calling Detective One Long Pan. Racehorse Dog Biscuit stolen on eve of race with Rear Admiral. Report to Mrs. Larry Bain Jitney. Shake it up, Long Pan. Snoop around the stable. See what's in the wind. Calling one long pan, calling one long pan, reporting one Come in. Greetings, uh, hi-ho, Kitty. Detective one along pan on job. Makes things hum pronto. Hi-ho, hi-ho. I love a Minsky show. A Minsky show, I always go hi-ho. Who is this person, Metcalf? I say, if you're leaving samples of egg foo young... Foo young you, Mr. Flunker. I command you to eject this bounder, Metcalf. Oh, 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 oh. what crap inject flounder? Long pan may be poor fish, but not flounder. The camels are coming. We're sure to have soup. The camels are coming. Boop, boop, boop. The camels are coming. Why, this man is an imbecile. A positive nitwit. Just what is your business here, jaundiced one? I am Detective One Along Pan. China Fellow Pants. You mean you're the detective they sent to find my dog biscuit? Exactly. You lose a uh, dog biscuit already? Yes. Have you any clues? Very simple. Kitty stuff. X-ray dog. Find dog biscuit every time. Hey, soft, so long. Why, where did he go? Of all the lunatics. I ho, cheerio. Are you back again? You bet. A long time forget important business. You mail reward care, YWCA. What? 
the YW is the girls' club, alien. You bet, you bet. A long pan, a part-time gigolo. So long. Come back here, you pigtailed moron. You better come back, uh, cutie pie. You, uh, you make a uh, little neck, honey clam. <laughs> but I say you haven't solved the mystery. Dog Biscuit is the name of my race horse. Yes, and why don't you start detecting, you Shanghai Babbitt? Uh, Shanghai Labbit. Yes. Uh, Dog Biscuit has got to race Rear Admiral tomorrow. If my horse defaults, I'll be locked out of Belmont. Very good. A long pass, wish into action. First required description, missing horse. Dog Biscuit is a white stallion with black spots very close to his mane. Hog uh, Fliskit, night a scallion, black spots on fair horse vein. <laughs> he has wide legs and big teeth, very yellow. Fried eggs, a pig's a feet, a chair yellow. Maybe fine horse in Fritchie there. <laughs> oh, ridiculous. This is the work of some crooked gambler. You're bad. Maybe Nick the Fleek, important clue. Horse not rambler, victim crooked gambler. Oh, ho, 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 ho. rambler gambler. Long pan China Irving Berlin. Come on along, come on along. Here Confucius, like time band. Uh, come on along, sir. If you're not the silliest, what was that? That was a knock on door. Long pan solve mystery every time. You, uh, you open door, what, what? Maybe important clue. Right-o. Yes? What is it? I hear there's been a horse stealer in these parts, lady. Who are you? I'm the Lone Ranger. <laughs> if Dog Biscuit can't race, I can rent you my horse, Silver. If Long Pan fails, I'll do it. Silver rents for $20 an hour. I'll give you 10 20 is the union scale, lady. Has the Lone Ranger a union? You bet. CIO Silver! <laughs> I say the solitary mountain. Quiet, a flunky. Long pond close in. Who last see missing horse, Flog Biscuit? My butler, Metcalf. Yes, I brought Dog Biscuit his supper about an hour ago. Very good. What a horse eat for supper? Maybe clue. Well, for an appetizer, he had an oat pan dowdy. Atomizer, gotha, can rowdy. For an entree, carrot Suzette. At the music. The main course was bran ragu. Dan le glue, danger, stan le glue. And for dessert, alfalfa souffle. Oh, alfalfa souffle. Yum, yum, delicious, delicious. No coffee? No, a demi-bucket of barley water. Oh, demi-bucket barley water. Lucky horse. Eat better than one long pan. Why not? Could you win the Santa Anita handicap? Oh, who know, Mrs. Smarty? Long pan never cry. What the dog biscuit do after supper? He listened to the radio for a while. Aha. Horse like radio. Important clue. Yes, before going to bed, dog biscuit always listened to the barn dance and Eddie Cantor cultural program. Very good. Aha. Knock at door. Very significant. On trade. Aha. Who are you, Mr. Knock on door? Hey, was the Lone Ranger just here? Yes. That's all I want to know. Silver cup bread is the big streamlined loaf. And I want... Hold on, hold on. Who are you, Silver Cup? Oh, I always come after the Lone Ranger. For what? To read the commercial. Silver cup bread is go the away, finest... Go away, go away. Take a walk. You take a walk. <laughs> One long pan, waste no time. Slam door. Two now. You've got to do something, Long Pan. You better do something. Long Pan, go to town. Investigate Sheena Klein. Where's your stable? It's right out here. Well, let's go. Oh, my, it's dark out here. I can't see the path to the stable. Long pan detective. Long pan fire stable. Take a deep breath. Ah, ah, ah. You turn left, turn left. You catch him. <laughs> oh, yes, here it is. Now open the stable door, Metcalf. Right oh. Uh, wait, I shall switch on the light. Ah, uh, fancy stable. Duplex store, both empty. Who occupies second store? That used to be Queenie's. Queenie? Yes, she was a mare I used to race. I sold her a few weeks ago. Aha! What's she little femme? <laughs> Important clue. When you sell Queenie, dog, uh, dog, uh, dog, uh, dog, uh, dog, a uh, uh, carry torch, uh, maybe? Oh, he was quite upset, quite yes. Upset. <laughs> we showed movies in the stable that night, and he came whinnying at Catherine Hepburn. Very significant. Oh, so, oh, so significant. Long pan examine dog biscuit stall. 
Oh, that fancy, oh, high class. Silk line oat bag. Plumium shoe tree for her shoe. Picture on wall. Yes, that's Clem McCarthy. Oh, Clem. From your Clem to, to dog a biscuit. Push an all autograph. What is empty picture here, Flame, here? Queenie's picture was in that frame. Good heavens, it's gone. Dog biscuit have a sweet opportunity picture in store? Yes, after Queenie was sold, I had to put her picture there to quiet dog biscuit. Very significant. Who leave this newspaper on floor? Oh, that's today's Times. Dog Biscuit insisted upon browsing over his press clippings daily. You see, paper torn, a radio page missing. Is that important, long pants? You bet, you bet, a long pants, a short pants under long pants. <laughs> you got, uh, you got radio installed? Here? Yes, it's right here. Long pan, pan on. Important clue on radio. Certain program. But what can a radio program have to do with dog biscuits? You keep skirt on, Missy. You listen. This is station PDQ. We now present that popular program, We the People. Thank you, Mr. Sparks. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the most unusual attraction We the People has ever offered. A broken-hearted lover is here in our studio, sobbing over the picture of his missing sweetheart. You are going to hear this remarkable Romeo sob out a plea for his lost Juliet. And here he is, Dog Biscuit, speaking to his queenie. <laughs> we the people need. Ah, oh, you see? That was my Dog Biscuit, my Dog Biscuit. You better, Dog Biscuit. Turn later off. right -o. Mistress saw Long Pan never fail. And Dog Biscuit will race tomorrow? No, no, Dog Biscuit not race tomorrow. Double cross, one long pan. Spoil sketch this week, Dog Biscuit not race. <laughs> dog Biscuit, go long pan tomorrow, go personally. Speak, a Dog Biscuit, spoil sketch. But... Long Pan, how did you know you'd find my horse, Dog Biscuit, on the radio? Very simple, Mr. Jetney. Aesop say, Aesop say, any time horse missing, tune in any sponsor program. Sure to hear plug. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Long Pan, hot tonight. Maybe fire tomorrow, but hot tonight. <laughs> Before we show you a few rough sketches of next week's design for laughing, Andre Baruch would like to leave you with this thought. Every time you buy and use Ipana and Salopatica, ladies and gentlemen, you are not only enjoying the extra benefits of an ideal toothpaste and an ideal laxative, but you are also showing us in the most friendly way possible that you appreciate these Wednesdays with Fred Allen and want them to continue. So thanks for remembering Ipana for the smile of beauty... Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. I Panna, Sal Hepatica. Thank you, Andre. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, next Wednesday evening, Town Hall Tonight brings you comedy. <laughs> Drama. I'll never marry you, Rudolph. You're leading a double life. Can I help it if I'm a stand-in for Robert Taylor? People you didn't expect to meet. A man who will imitate any dancing star you name and reproduce their dances with his fingers. Don't miss him. And music. This is 
the National Broadcasting Company.